Well, Lewis, a very warm welcome to the club. Just talk us through what role you're hoping to play between now and the end of the season. Yeah, so it happened quite quickly. Um, obviously, injuries and happen. It's unfortunate in January and things can happen quite quickly. So um, just coming into sort of number two to start with and competing and challenging, really. So that's kind of what I'm here for. And just in terms of choosing Pompey, what was the, the main incentive for that? Um, it, was, it was one of those where it was just a quick quick done, got a phone call, was like, yeah, Portsmouth's a huge club, historic and massive, so it was just one of those where it was just an opportunity that I couldn't, couldn't turn down. And I should be saying welcome back, really, because you had a, a short spell with us when you were 16, I believe. Yeah, it was a youth team, youth team loan, um, sort of end of the season. I was trying to get experience for 18s football, and I think that was another injury at that point, and I think some of the lads are still here from, from those days, so it'd be nice to reacquaint almost. When you were at Reading and, and coming through the youth ranks there, you had a number of loan moves and you seemed to be just sort of working your way up through the leagues. You started in the National League South, then the National League and, and then League Two with Forest Green and of course League Two with Exeter as well. Do you see this as the, the next step up up that ladder? Yeah, definitely. I think I think there was a pathway at Reading and that was that was stepping up the leagues and working almost to the championship side and then obviously I had to leave, I joined Exeter, which was great, and that was my sort of home League Two start and try and establish myself in the league and then this is my next step into League One and hopefully can go further. Because of course a lot of people say that academy football is, is different to men's football. What are kind of the, the standout moments and the learning curves that you had when you were at the likes of Hungerford and, and Aldershot? So Hungerford was sort of one of the first ones along with Margate and just playing in front of fans. That was one of the biggest things. You, you turn up to a game, there's points riding on it, there's people's weekends, enjoyment, whether they're going to be happy or sad over the next couple of days until the next game. Um, so those, those kind of games with the fans were, were really standouts and stepping up from Conference South with 200 to 500 fans to Aldershot, which was 3,000 at home games, which was incredible. And then into League Two, it's even more. So that's just one of the things that just stands out for me. So this season, you must feel like you're sort of going back to those academy days with, with empty stadiums. How, how have you sort of dealt with it? Yeah, so it was, it was tough, um, especially because sort of the week before fans came back, I got injured. So it was, it was devastating to see fans back in the stadium and me sort of sitting there watching the games as well. But it was nice when the fans were back in there for that short period of time. It's sad that they're not continuing that, but hopefully we can get through this and they'll be back in the stadiums again. You mentioned your injury. Just, just talk us through that one and, and what it was. Yeah, so it was an ankle ankle rupture, which was a shame. Um, I thought I was playing well at the time. Started a run, run of games in the league, and um, I came for a cross and managed to get taken out by a teammate and just landed awkwardly on my ankle. And I was very lucky that it was it was the time frame that it was not longer. So I'm all good now, which is which is perfect. And in terms of the the rehab for a you know for an ankle injury, that's pretty good to be able to to work your way back up pretty quickly. Yeah, it was, it was kind of a case of the swelling was very abrupt and very brutal. Um, it was almost up to my knee, so the bruising came out and it was just trying to settle that down, get the swelling down, and then just strengthen up the ligaments, get the range back, making sure it's strong when passing, kicking, and then obviously a goalie, you've got to jump, land on it, so it was making sure that was all strong as well. So it took a little longer than probably what I wanted, but it's made sure that it won't be a long-lasting injury. And I think I'm right in saying it's not the first injury you've had. The, the story goes that you were playing in a game against Crew, you broke your arm and then you actually finished the game. Yeah, so um, similar to sort of the ankle, I just finished the game, thought I could get through it. And um, sort of a corner came in, I think it was 80th minute or so, and I've gone to punch it. Uh, crew defenders come through, I punched the ball, he's headed my arm. Um, I thought, oh, that's a little bit tender, just little knock, physio came on, checked it, all fine. Um, then a couple of minutes later, I made a save and thought, oh, that, that doesn't feel right at all. So um, two minutes after that, we'd already made all our subs, so I couldn't have come off anyway. So I thought I'd try and finish it. And then this corner's coming into the box. It was 1-1, so just try and get through it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was one of those where if I'd known I broke it, I don't know if I would have played on, but it was, I didn't think I'd, I'd broken my arm. So I just had to play on, really. I mean, regardless of that, it must say a lot about your character that you, you were happy to play on and I suppose the adrenaline must have been a, a bit of a factor as well. Yeah, I think, I think at the time we were both challenging for sort of a top three spot. I think it was second v third at the time and it was one of those where 
it was 1-1, it's a tight game, there's no sub, we've already made all our subs, um, and yeah, I, I thought I could carry on, so I was just happy to get through the rest of the game. Normally we, we always like to talk to players that come in about times that they played at Fratton Park before, but I almost feel a little bit bad talking to you about this one, <laughs> because it was a, a bit of a, a negative memory for you, rather than a positive one. I mean, it was probably the most roller coaster 10 minutes in a football game I've yeah. ever played in. I don't know. If We're of course talking about the the yeah, EFL trophy game. The EFL actually, trophy yeah. game. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Fans might remember it. They might not. But it's it was a hell of a game. Um, but for me, that was one of the standout games in my career. Playing in front of fourteen thousand people. It was one of the biggest games that I've played in a semi final. Um, it was a great game, and I thought we did well until the eightieth minute, and then. Out of nowhere, three goals and you're three two down. Um, it was it was tough to take, but just playing here was amazing. Just the fan fans were incredible. And I'm sure when John Marquis did score that header past you, you didn't think that you might have the opportunity to to play in the final for Portsmouth because of course it, it hasn't been played yet. It hasn't been played yet. Um, I don't know if I'll be cup tied because of last season or if it will be this season's like roster. So I haven't played this season. So if I'm not cup tied, then hopefully I can play in the final but if it's from last season then I'll be, be disappointed but it'll be a good game to watch um, and yeah uh, hopefully I can get my own back in training a few times now. Being a goalkeeper it's obviously a position where there's a lot of competition and, and no more so here because even with Alex Bass out injured you've still got Craig who's our number one and, and Duncan Turnbull and Taylor Seymour as well. Yeah no I, I, I know my role coming into the club I know I'm not going to walk straight in and play at the weekend so I'm, I'm here to compete and challenge and it's just good all round if everyone's everyone knows that there's that competing factor. Um, everyone's got to be on their toes and got to be ready and it improves everyone. So if I can push Craig and he pushes me, then it, it's great. And obviously goalkeepers tend to have sort of different strengths, you know, shot stopping, commanding the area. What would you say your, your main ones are? Um, I'm a bigger goalie. Um, I like to come off my line, deal with like the aerial balls into the box. Um, I feel like I'm decent at shot stopping and I can distribute a ball as well. So I feel like I can do most things that are asked of me when needed upon. Um, don't like to be too flashy and just keep it simple, really. That's kind of me. Well, we wish you all the best during your time here and welcome again. Thank you. Appreciate it.